Have you ever heard or read the story A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens? It's a fantastic, wonderful story about Christmas and the spirit of giving. Well, today we're going to read A Christmas Carol. It's an adaptation of the original story by Charles Dickens in the library, The Lit for Little Hands. It's a lot of fun because it has moving parts, see? Let's read it. Ebenezer Scrooge was the meanest miser the world had ever known. Even though it was Christmas Eve, Scrooge worked away in his counting house. Scrooge hated Christmas. His clerk, Bob Cratchit, shivered at the bitter weather and the bitter company. Bah, humbug. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. At home that night, Scrooge heard a terrible clanking. Suddenly, the ghost of Jacob Marley. Scrooge's former business partner floated through the locked door, surrounded by a heavy iron chain. Punishment for all the cruel things Marley had done while he was alive. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. Marley warned Scrooge that he would also have a chain, and his would be even longer if Scrooge did not change his ways. You will be haunted by three spirits, Marley said. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Scrooge went to bed, but as Marley promised, when the clock struck one, the first ghost appeared. Softly, the ghost said, I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? asked Scrooge. No, your past, the ghost replied. The ghost took Scrooge by the hand and together they visited some of Scrooge's boyhood memories. His lonely time at boarding school and finally his sister coming to bring him home for Christmas. Scrooge remembered a young boy caroling at his door he wished he'd given him a coin. The ghost took him to a lively Christmas party hosted by his old boss, Mr. Fezziwig. Scrooge danced to the wonderful music along with the crowd and his younger self. Scrooge remembered the joy he used to feel around Christmas, surrounded by friends and a kind employer. When Scrooge began to care only about money, he lost that joy and the people he loved. The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. Dancing. When the clock struck two, the second ghost appeared. This was the ghost of Christmas present. He sat by a roaring fire, surrounded by a scrumptious feast, turkeys and sausages and mince pies and pears from the great throne for the jolly giant. Spirit, conduct me where you will. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. The ghost showed Scrooge a very different feast at his clerk's small home. Bob Cratchit's son, Tiny Tim, walked with a crutch but he smiled wildly at the meager Christmas meal before him. Scrooge marveled that the Cratchit family had so little and yet were so happy. God bless us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. When the clock struck three, the third ghost appeared. This ghost was cloaked and silent, but Scrooge knew it must be the ghost of Christmas yet to come. 
Looking into the future, Scrooge saw the mourning family of poor Tiny Tim. Scrooge's heart broke to think that such a joyful boy might die. Then the ghost pointed to a forgotten gravestone. The inscription read, Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge knew he must change. It was a beautiful Christmas morning, and he wasted no time. He walked about the streets, spreading cheer and generosity. Thinking of the past, present, and future, he became as good a man as the world had ever known. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year. A Christmas Carol. An adaptation for kids by Charles Dickens and adapted by Brooke Jordan. A lit for little hands book published by Familias.